Welcome everyone to another episode of 5 Minutes with Cyril. I want to talk today about light odometry. So what is light odometry and why should we care? Light odometry is a standard component in uh, mobile robotics and it basically means using your laser scanner that is, is installed on your mobile robot to estimate the ego motion of your platform. This is something which was called scan matching in the old days and a lot of successful systems have been proposed. In 2D this was for example the Vasco system developed by Dirk Handel and in 3D um, prominent examples are LOAM which was a key milestone in here, um, the MULS system, CTICP, GLIM or KISS ICP just to name a few examples. Most of those systems however are fairly complex and there are a lot of parameters that you need to optimize. Thus it can be quite tricky to adapt it to your platform. I want to take a step backwards here and talk about KISS ICP, a very simple, small and yet effective system with a small number of parameters that allows you um, to use on basically any laser scanner um, that is installed in a mobile platform in order to estimate the motion of that platform. So how does KISS ICP, which was developed by Ignacio Visso as the main developer, actually work? So there are a few ingredients that need to be done well in order to build an effective system. The first is an insight how that registration problem is treated. It's important to note that we don't have random point clouds that need to be registered. We actually have a platform moving through the environment, so it's a better idea to predict the motion of the platform and then just use the laser scanner to correct that prediction. That makes all the data association problems much, much easier. So the first thing we need to do, we need to get a good prediction about the movement of the platform. How can we do that? There are different ways how we can do that. Odometry, based on wheel encoders, is the first thing. So it's basically hardware odometry. Or we can take an IMU to get that estimate. Or if we don't want to install any other sensor on our platform, we can simply use a constant velocity model. And it's surprisingly effective. The constant velocity model basically says uh, the robot is executing the same velocity that it was executing in the previous point in time. That basically means this prediction doesn't take accelerations or decelerations into account. And then we are only using the um, later, later data to take into account these accelerations or decelerations. So we're using a constant velocity prediction and we can also use this prediction to kind of de-skew or undistort our scan. That means we are taking into account that during a single scan the platform was actually moving. So not every beam, not every individual range measurement has been taken at the same point in time. And by Using this motion prediction, we can actually undistort the scan and recover the local geometry without distortions. This is especially important for fast driving platforms such as autonomous cars, for example. The next things we need to take into account is how to store our data, our point clouds. We typically have a map that contains all the data recorded so far and our current scan. And for both, we typically use a spatial subsampling. That means we use something as a voxel grid, typically a more efficient representation, such as a 3D hash table, for example, and store only a subset of those points in the map and also in the current scan. So we don't take all 3D points into account. We dramatically subsample that scan and perform the registration only on this subsampled scan. And um, to do that, we need to look for correspondences for possible data associations. So we take our current scan and basically look for neighbors in that map. And for that, we already use the prediction. And the search radius here should be adapted by taking into account how much do we trust our prediction. And we can take this information into account in order to look for data associations. And this is highly effective because wrong data associations are really the main problem of these um, laid odometry systems. Once we determine the possible data associations, we take them and put them into a least squares ICP. So running ICP and typically point to point is totally sufficient to do that job combined with a robust kernel in order to perform the minimization. I'm recommending a gammon mcclure kernel, so a kernel that has a strong outlier rejection. And you perform your least squares iteratively, reduce your error function and then obtain a motion correction that tells you how much did your model deviate from the constant velocity model. And this you use, you apply that transformation to the motion of your mobile platform. This allows you to get a pretty accurate trajectory estimate for your mobile platform. And these are the key ingredients of KISS ICP, a system which has a small number of parameters, works basically on any laser scanner, doesn't need to be adapted, um, is available in Python, has C++ code in there. So it's very effective, runs at 40 Hertz and can basically be used on any platform. You can install it by typing in a few commands and run it. It's very easy to use and it's a good starting point in order to get a high performance, 
light odometry system that allows you eager motion estimation for SLAM, for exploring unknown environments, um, for doing localization for a large number of robotics applications. I hope that was useful and gave you an idea what light odometry is, what are the key components and how you can use them. And at that point here, special thanks to Ignacio Visso for sharing his code and his descriptions on KISS ICP um, so that everyone is able to build an effective light odometry system. Thank you very much for your attention.